me like uh, <laughs> this produce in the net has, uh, well, I think it's uh, reached its prime. <laughs> but, uh, it's a, uh, a gray, rainy day and it is very pleasant just to be sitting down below relaxing aboard Starlight. Good day to do a little uh, basic engine maintenance. So we're going to open up the uh, engine room here and uh, check the uh, zinc on the raw water cooling. All right, steps are out, toolbox is out of the way. Last thing is to uh, release the slide bolts, flip the door open here, and uh, latch it in the open position. I think I'm uh, also going to pull the lower panel. It isn't really necessary. I can do everything I need in here uh, without it, but uh, it's just a little simpler and I can reach in a little bit deeper if I pull this lower panel out. So there's our uh, nice red little new beta. I think we're up to uh, just over a hundred hours on her now. zinc for the heat exchanger is uh, located right back here on the back corner. Pull that out and uh, just make sure uh, if it's in good shape we'll leave it alone or if it needs to be a replacement I do have spares. I've removed the uh, side door to the engine room that's here in the quarter berth and uh, set it off to the side. These removable side doors uh, give just amazingly good access. So the zinc for the uh, raw water heat exchanger is uh, right here. We just have to uh, basically uh, pull this out. The zinc is attached to the end of it. If it's all good, we'll just put it right back in. And if we need a replacement, I've got spares in my spare parts kit. So the zinc anode fits into the uh, heat exchanger on the engine. It's important that one keeps up with the zinc anodes because if they fail, then the heat exchanger will start to corrode and that is a very expensive part to replace. The uh, anode itself is not very big and that is probably one of the disadvantages with this particular engine is that this anode is rather small. Fortunately, it does a good job, but it is necessary to uh, keep an eye on it and check it uh, every few months. So having spare parts on board is you know, it's just a necessity with a boat. And uh, I have a container here that uh, I keep my spare engine parts in. Uh, I've got zincs in here for uh, the prop. Here's a spare impeller. There's uh, some extra packing material. I just repacked the stuffing box in the spring, so I don't anticipate I'm going to need this anytime soon, but you can bet if I don't have it on board, I will need it. There's some uh, engine control spare parts here. The uh, push buttons and the actuator for the gear shifter and uh, a few other little odds and ends. A spare V-belt. Spare engine zincs. Always keep a supply of those on board an extra thermostat, a thermostat gasket, water pump gaskets, heat exchanger gaskets, a master fuse for the engine, and an exhaust gasket for the engine. As those of you who watched the videos before know, I've uh, had to change that exhaust out. So, a few spare parts that are always handy to have on board. So in addition to the container with all the spare parts, which goes over here in this locker, we also have in here spare fuel filters, spare oil filters, spare air filter, <laughs> and some funnels and uh, some other miscellaneous odds and ends. Anything related to the engine and or diesel, I keep pretty much in this locker. 
Uh, the uh, nut on the original beta zinc is a uh, 17 mil. And uh, the nut on this uh, less expensive alternative is a 14 mil. But, uh, we'll get this uh, switched out here. That is assuming we need to switch it out. Keep a lot of paper towels handy because uh, this drips all over the rear motor mount. And uh, somehow having a paper towel on it makes me feel like I'm stemming the flow. Alright, well that zinc is uh, still functional but uh, I think we're going to go ahead and change it. And uh, put in one of these... Uh, Newer versions. So I'm going to uh, wipe everything down here, make sure that we don't have a leak, and uh, call that good. It's so annoying that this all drips right on to this uh, motor mount. And, uh, really nothing I can do about that other than uh, just try to keep it uh, cleaned up afterward. Well there's the uh, zinc I took out and as you can see it's actually not in uh, too bad a shape. There's probably 40-50% uh, of it left but what the heck. Might as well change it. These uh, zincs that uh, beta people sell, they work well. Uh, but they do have one disadvantage in that the zinc itself is actually cast in to this uh, brass or bronze uh, head. And then it threads on into the uh, heat exchanger. The downside is you have to replace the entire unit. So I did some checking around and... I actually found I could buy a replacement bronze piece and a short stub of zinc that screws down into it. Well, this is the original factory zinc. In fact, still got the red paint on it. And as I was saying, the zinc itself is cast right into this bronze or brass body. The head is uh, 17 mil. The replacement is a 14 millimeter head, which doesn't really matter. The key thing is the threads are both tapered threads. The nice thing with this new arrangement is this little zinc is threaded on the end, as is the inside of the bronze piece. So I simply screw the new piece in and then insert it into the engine. The nice thing about this is that I get four of these zincs for the price of one of those zincs. The zinc is okay. Just check the oil. It's looking good. So uh, I guess it's time to put the side door back on and uh, at least call this little bit of maintenance uh, complete. The quarter berth bulkhead is the last remaining piece of the original darkly oiled teak interior. The two engine room access doors are new and are finished with a clear satin finish like I used on the rest of the boat's interior.
Well, everything looks good in here. Uh, I'm pleased that that zinc was in good shape. There's nothing else obvious in here, so uh, we're going to uh, wrap things up. Oops, forgot the toolbox. I built that toolbox specifically to fit in that spot. Okay, now we're done.